And here we are back with another episode of Twisted Pair. My name's Damon, and I'll be your host for this episode. Today, we are talking about thread inserts, what they are, how to use them, and why to use them. Let's get going on it. What are nut inserts, sometimes called rib nuts, nut zerts? There's a lot of different names for them. Um, in this case, this, this one right here is rubberized. This could also be called a, a well nut. Well, what they are is they're basically a set of threads that get compressed on a piece of metal, such as this sign here that I found. It, it fell off the back of a truck down the road from my house. So this sign here, we're going to be putting some holes in it because we need some sheet metal to, to demonstrate things on. And the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is just the traditional self-tapping screw. Now, a self-tapping screw, they're, they're commonly used in the upfit industry, and they hold things on, but they don't hold things forever, but they hold things in place, you know, when you build a vehicle. But down the road, things are going to vibrate loose. That's almost guaranteed. I'm sure you've all seen it before in the past. But on top of that, something like this, on the inside of something like this is a good way to cut yourself like that. And that hurts. So when we're using something, um, you know, like a, a screw like that, where there's definitely a capability of one being harmed, but two, probably more importantly, and the more common issue is uh, having it vibrate loose. The nut cert can come into play and it can really do a better job securing something in place. So what is a nut cert? How does it work? Well, all of these are different nut certs. I'm going to move this out of the way. And each one of these nut certs, the idea behind it is you're going to compress it like a rivet to a piece of metal, such as this one here. And when you compress it, it will basically flare out on the far edge here, or on, on this edge of it, it'll flare out and hold tight to the metal. And then you've almost basically got a nut that stays in place. And there's different types of nut certs. So the different types that we have are steel. So we've got two different steel ones here. We have aluminum, and then we've got the rubber ones, which are like well nuts. Now this one here, the rubber one, can work on its own without any extra tools. It's just a matter of drill the hole to the right size. Oops. Uh, it's just a matter of drilling the holes to the right size, pushing this in, keeping some force on it while you tighten your number eight or 10 or 12, whatever it is you're using, and it will compress on its own, kind of bulge a little bit. And that will hold things in place. That's great for mounting to plastic because sometimes with plastic, you know, having something rubber there is going to hold better than having something metal there. Now, when you're mounting to metal, the metal you're mounting to comes into play. So obviously if we're mounting to an aluminum piece, like maybe we're mounting a surface mount light that has a couple screws that hold the light in place and it's getting mounted to an aluminum panel. Well, these come into play at that point. And I've got two different types here. I've got the standard flare which has the knurl on it. You can see the knurl there. And once you tighten it down, that knurl is going to hold it in place so it doesn't spin on you. And we've got the low profile type, which really is almost no taller than the metal itself when you use it. But these aren't as strong. They're more likely to spin out. Um, when you compress this one, it's got a much wider bite area. So as it compresses, it's going to spin out less. Now here, I'm going to show you an example of how this works with a nut zert tool. So let's start by opening the tool up. Now there's a couple different tools here um, on the screen right now. What I'm showing you here, this is the Pop PNT 110. This is my favorite because this one here, you can take the mandrels and just pull them right out and put them right back in. Change your size. So if you had a different size, we can uh, like this is an 832, but if I had like a 1032 or a 1024, I could just pull this out, unscrew the end here, put the new end on, push the new mandrel in, and it's ready to go. But how does this work? Well, let's show you. I'm going to thread this on. Let's thread it on. I've got a little bit sticking through. One thing you want to make sure when you do this is make sure you've got full thread engagement. So the thread needs to be all the way through so you have the strength of the threads. And then it's just a matter of compressing. And here we go. Let's compress it. And there you go. You can see how it's basically created this area where it's compressed onto it. Now, if this was going into aluminum or something like that, 
Um, this is going to basically have a good bite on the aluminum on the back side. And the fact that this is aluminum and the metal it's going to is also aluminum. Well, we're not going to have any kind of galvanic corrosion. So let's go on to the next type we have here. This is a steel one and you've got steel and stainless steel. They work the same. They're a little bit harder to work with because when they are steel, um, you got to have a little bit more strength on the, on the tool. So now let's start talking about the tools. Like I said earlier, this is my favorite tool, but there's other kinds, like what I've got on the screen right now. This is a Marson tool. Now, I'm not going to actually do a demonstration with the Marson because I don't have one. Um, I've used them in the past. Uh, I prefer my, my Pop brand, but the Marson one is just as good. Basically, with the Marson one, you're threading the mandrel into the actual unit. Then you thread the, uh, the nuts are onto the mandrel, compress it, and then unthread everything, and you're back to where you started so you can do the next one. So for the larger ones, you might use a tool like this. Really all this is, is a really tall Wislock nut or a flare nut, whatever you want to call it, that's been drilled out and it'll handle, you know, a bolt up to about five sixteenths. And I just thread that through, put like the, this is a quarter inch, so I could put a quarter inch one on, give it a quick thread. I'm going to take it all the way up and we'll actually install this one into our sign here. So let me move all this out of the way. All right, so for this, we're going to need a couple different tools to make this work. Um, the first tool, you're probably going to want to use an impact for this. Um, now, this is a quarter inch bolt, so it's going to be a 7 16 uh, socket head on the, on the back side. And then this particular unit, the actual unit I'm using to compress it, that's a 9 16. So I'm going to grab a hold of that. And what we're going to do with this is put it through the, uh, the mounting hole. So right there. Now I'm going to put something under it just so I can push down because you're going to want to keep pressure on this as it's happening. And it's just a matter of putting everything together, holding on and going. So here we go. All right. So right now everything's threaded nice and tight. I'm going to back it out. And that thing is on there tight. And if you look at the back side here, you can see it's, it's mushroomed out. It's holding on nice and tight. And now I've got a bolt hole to thread to with an actual, you know, a bolt, which means it's replaceable should I need to take whatever's mounted to this off at a later point. All right, so you can see what, what these can do. They can create what was once just a hole that could easily be stripped out. They can create into a set of threads for a regular screw, like a machine screw or a, you know, a 3 16 whatever it needs to be can now fit into that hole and secure something. And these are much, much more secure than a self-tapping screw would ever be. And on top of that, self-tapping screws, they break sometimes when you're putting them through metal. This is gonna do a much better job, a cleaner install, and it's obviously it'll handle different uh, thicknesses of the metal. So aside from what I showed you in, in the episode, there are some other tools out there. Um, on the screen right now, I've got a pneumatic type tool. So this one's gonna just use air pressure to do the job for you. Um, we've also got like the heavy duty type tool that takes two hands and it's made for like the bigger type nut certs, um, you know, starting with maybe a quarter inch and going bigger from there. And finally, we have the drill type, which is intended to work on the end of your drill. You just put your drill, hook it up to that, get everything nice and secured, and then you can just pull the trigger on the drill and it'll tighten everything down for you. And that works with both electronic drills or any kind of impact that takes like the quarter inch hex type bit. So all the tools that I've shown you today, we've got them down in the description for this video. There's direct links to each one, as well as our twisted pair shopping list on Amazon. And then if you've got any questions or ideas for future videos, please let us know. This video is actually in response to a question that came up from one of our customers and they, they said this would be a really cool video to do. So this is what we're doing. So I think that's all I've got for today. Um, until next time.